Hello, welcome to Science Chomp. Today we're going to be talking about meiosis. Before we get into the process of meiosis, let's have a look at some of the key words that we have to be familiar with. First of all, we have diploid. Diploid refers to a cell with two sets of chromosomes. Haploid is a cell with one set of chromosomes, for example, eggs and sperm. A gamete is a haploid sex cell and in this case it's sperm or eggs and a zygote is a diploid cell that forms on gametes meet. Now it's very important to familiarize yourself with these words in particular diploid and haploid. With meiosis we first of all start off with a diploid germline cell and we end up with haploid gametes. Now what this, uh, or rather why this is important is because as a human being, we all have 46 chromosomes in our cells. However, if the sperm and egg were to meet and they both had 46 chromosomes each, that would lead to a doubling of chromosomes and you'd end up with 92 chromosomes. And every subsequent generation, you'd get a doubling of chromosomes. First of all, um, the cell isn't big enough to hold that many chromosomes and have it keep on doubling. And then the, the next reason why that's bad is because, well, it will be so much DNA, how much of it is going to be read and what impact is that going to have on the organism. So in order to control that, what your um, cells do is it makes the number smaller. So you go from diploid with um, 46 chromosomes to haploid um, sperm and egg cells which have 23 each and that's the key. This is what meiosis is all about. So let's get right into it. Before meiosis even begins, the cell is in a stage known as interphase, which is divided into G1, S and G2. G1 is gap phase 1, where the cell grows. S is a synthesis stage, where the DNA replicates. And G2 is gap phase 2, that makes proteins for cell division. So this all occurs before meiosis begins. Meiosis itself is divided into PMAT. That's prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And all of these happen twice. As mentioned earlier, during interphase, particularly the synthesis stage, the DNA itself replicates. So you have a tiny little strand of DNA, for example, this one, and it replicates to give you a shape a little bit like this. And this is key. Now, during prophase one, what happens is these things condense. Now, you have to imagine they're a little bit longer than this. I just didn't have the patience to make them that long. And so these uh, condense, meaning they get like shorter and fatter, and they turn into more like this. And you can actually observe these under a microscope. Of course, there's not going to be just one of them. You're going to have 46 of them, just like this. So here we are. Here are the chromosomes of the human body. Now, you may be wondering why some of them are green and some of them are red. That's because um, the green ones are provided by your mother and the red ones are provided by your father. So as you can see, you've got 23 green ones and 23 red ones. That's why um, some people say it's 23 pairs rather than 46. Overall, you've got 46, but 23 come from your mum, 23 come from your dad. Uh, this particular one is a male, as you can see, uh, this one in the corner is a Y shape, and this is an X shape. And these are what we would call homologous chromosomes, meaning that if there's a gene for eye colour over here on this part of the chromosome, there's also a gene for eye colour over there. So they're the equivalent. So if this is your mother's chromosome 1, this is your father's chromosome 1. Do you see what I mean? They have the same genes, but obviously the mother's version and the father's version. Now, one thing I shouldn't forget to mention here that even though we've got 46 chromosomes, each chromosome is divided into two chromatids, so these bits here, and they're held together in the middle 
by what's called a centromere. So it's still 46 chromosomes, but we have 46 times 2, which is uh, 92 chromatids. Okay, so during prophase 1, what happens is homologous chromosomes come together. So um, your chromosome 1 from your mother joins up with chromosome 1 from your father, forming what we call a bivalent. And what happens is they cross over, meaning they just sort of go over each other, kind of like so. And when they do that, they sort of join together like this. And this bit where they join together, we call a chiasma. So this is literally crossing over um, the, the other chromosome. And this is why they call this crossing over. And when it actually swaps DNA, so what happens is this bit and this bit, they swap over. So that bit goes on here and this bit goes on there. And you call this swapping of uh, DNA, you call that this recombination. So now you've got chromosomes with recomb recombined DNA. Okay, and this leads to all sorts of uh, genetic variation. In fact, one set of parents can produce something like uh, 70 trillion different combinations of, of children, purely because of the amount of uh, swapping over of genes that occurs during meiosis. So to summarize, homologous chromosomes, they line up, crossing over happens, Okay, and um, recombination occurs. So recombination is a swapping of genes. Okay, so just make sure you know those three points. Let's look at what happens to the cell in general. So I've simplified the cell a little bit here. I've only got six chromosomes now, and I've got these two little yellow things called uh, centrioles. Now what they do during prophase, so we're still in prophase one here, is that they move to the poles of the cell, and they have these little um, microtubule fibers that they spread across the cell at the same time as well. And so this goes all the way across over here, and this goes all the way across over here. And it kind of ends up a little bit like this. So these things are called centrioles, and these things are called spindle fibers, and they're made out of microtubules. Okay, so centriole, spindle fibers made out of microtubules. So this is all happening during prophase one. During metaphase one, the best way to remember this is that metaphase begins with an M, all of the homologous chromosomes pair up in the middle, known as the metaphase plate, okay? And the spindle fibers now attach from the centromere to the uh, centriole, kind of a little bit like this. So this is metaphase one. So the homologous cr chromosomes have lined up in the middle across the metaphase plate. And now we're going to go into anaphase one, and it's anaphase A for away. And what's happening is uh, the chromosomes get pulled over, kind of a little bit like this. So the spindle fiber pushes it towards the centromere, and they all kind of just travel along that same path. So that's anaphase A for away. So they move away from the middle to the poles. So that leads us to the T part of PMAT, telophase. And during telophase, what happens is the spindle fibers disappear, so they go away. And uh, these things, these centrioles are still around. But what happens is the nuclear envelope forms around this and this. So the nuclear envelope reforms 
And then the last part is called cytokinesis, where this cell actually splits into two pieces. So it's a little bit like this, and then it splits up. You end up like this. So now you've got um, two cells, and each have half the number of chromosomes as before. So you've gone from 46 chromosomes to 23 chromosomes here and 23 chromosomes here. However, you still have um, the, uh, the, uh, the number of chromatids that are doubled. So you still have now 46 chromatids in each cell. So that's the end of the first part of meiosis. And this leads us to the second part of meiosis, obviously called uh, meiosis two. Uh, so let's have a look at that. I'm only going to focus on one of the, the, the sides now. So I'm going to focus on the cell that was formed over there. And what happens during prophase two is that here's the cell. The nuclear envelope has broken down and these uh, centrioles are still around and the spindle reforms. So you've got this spindle thing happening uh, where it's connecting this one and that. So this reforms, okay? And during metaphase two, so this is prophase two, the nuclear envelope has broken down. During metaphase two, what happens is these things just move to the side of the poles, to the side of the cell like this, to the poles of the cell. And the chromosomes, they are no, no longer homologous, but they do line up in the middle of the cell like this. And the spindle reforms and connects to the centromere, like so. And you've got one on each side, like that. And that happens to all of them. So it ends up a little bit like this. So this is metaphase two. You've got the metaphase plate here and the chromosomes have lined up, lined up across the metaphase plate, connected to the centrioles through the microtubule fi spindle fibers here. So they call it a spindle fiber. It's made out of microtubules. Okay, so that's the distinction right there. During anaphase, anaphase two, what happens is now these chromosomes, they split up. Okay, now we're into telophase two. Uh, this is towards the end of meiosis two. And as you can see, we've uh, gotten rid of the spindle fibers and the nuclear envelope has reformed around uh, the poles. And each pole gets 23 chromosomes. Now, of course, here I've only got three each, but uh, in a human cell, you're gonna have 23 chromosomes and each chromosome consists of only one chromatid. So it's going to be 23 chromosomes with 23 chromatids. Now, the difference between meiosis one and meiosis two is that at the end of meiosis one, you have 23 chromosomes, but because they're like this, it's 23 chromosomes with 46 chromatids, whereas it splits apart during meiosis two. OK, and then, of course, after this, we have cytokinesis, which spreads it apart. You have uh, distinct cells. OK, that's about it for meiosis. I know it's a lot of details, um, but thank you very much for watching and best of luck in the exams. Goodbye. <laughs>